About two months ago, OpenAI President Brockman made a statement on Twitter saying there are creative methods to improve AI safety in surprising ways which are not even talked about. For example, it's easy to create a continuum of incrementally better AIs such as by deploying subsequent checkpoints of a given training run. This was suggesting that we may get a GPT 4.2 instead of a GPT 5 for the next major update and he solidifies this suggestion by saying it would be very unlike our historical approach of infrequent major model upgrades but says it presents a safety opportunity, one that has not previously been tested. Brockman also said that the general goal of OpenAI is for each model we ship to be the most aligned one yet. But does that mean that GPT-4.2 will be an entirely new model trained on larger parameters than GPT-4? No, this is what he means by incrementally better AI. As mentioned in Brockman's statement, GPT-4 was tested for 6 months and built on years of alignment research before being made publicly available. And having been trained with parameters larger than that using GPT-3.5, you might be inclined to think that there is no more accessible data left to train GPT-4.2 or even GPT-5, but you'd be wrong. You see, incrementally better AI is essentially iterative AI. That means the new model updates can be retrained on existing parameters and user-generated feedback, which I explained in my video about OpenAI's new chat history setting. Think of it as watching a movie over and over again, say Extraction 2, where you can now begin to notice the nuances of the 21 minute fight sequence and even point out at what parts of the movie there were cuts and wipes and continuity points, you get it. So you see, GPT 4.2 and above wouldn't be entirely new, instead they'd be iterations of GPT 4 with even greater alignment and reasoning capabilities, but GPT 5, when eventually in training, will have sufficient tokens or data to train with. This is backed by the research paper titled We Rerun Out of Data and Analysis of the Limits of Scaling Datasets in Machine Learning. And a key takeaway from the paper is that we will not run out of data until about 2030 to 2050. Um, the paper is linked in descriptions if you want to check it out. In a panel with OpenAI CEO Sam Altman at MIT, he refuted claims that GPT-5 was actually in training and said they are nowhere near training for GPT-5 and let's take a look at the clip where Sam Altman talks about the safety issues needed to be resolved before they can begin training GPT-5. An earlier version of the letter claimed that OpenAI is training GPT-5 right now, we are not in for some time. Um, so in that sense it was sort of silly. but. We are doing other things on top of GPT-4 that I think have all sorts of safety issues that are important to address and we're totally left out of the letter. Um, so I think moving with caution and an increasing rigor for safety issues is really important. The letter, I don't think, is the optimal way to address it. Why is GPT-5 development delayed? A major reason for the deceleration in training powerful large language models like GPT-5 is not only on AI safety, a concern Altman has been very vocal about, but also on the ability of AI chatbots to replace jobs that humans may find fulfilling, as highlighted in the post giant AI experiments open letter that was signed by industry leaders from Google DeepMind and Elon Musk. Although Altman did not sign this letter, he tweeted that he agrees with some points, that OpenAI should make a great alignment dataset and alignment eval and release those, essentially saying that whatever alignment dataset and evaluations OpenAI makes and uses should be publicly available, and bonus points if they can find a prototype democratic process that could include public stakeholders for what we align to. I briefly explained the post giant AI experiment open letter in this video above and I think the letter does a great job highlighting some of the potential risks of training models like GPT-5 so soon, but I also argue why posting developments for the likes of GPT-5 might do just more harm than good. I think OpenAI is comfortable announcing that they've not started training GPT-5 because GPT-4 is already miles ahead of the competition, even with the release of Google's DeepMind Palm 2. Check out this video to see a comparison between both. Brockman also says that the key to OpenAI's mission is the need to take safety seriously and proceed with caution in the opening of his tweet statement. I think this is understandable because on Sam Altman's recent world tour, him and Ilya Seskova consistently echoed why they're calling for caution, regulation and safety so early on as it will be hard to put the genie back in the bottle should large AI models be allowed to scale unchecked in these early stages. In the famous Sparks of AGI paper, the author showed how GPT-4 in training incrementally got better at specific tasks, like drawing this unicorn in Tix. The question is, draw a unicorn in Tixi. Let me show you the unicorn that it came up with. Okay. So this is, this is GPT-4's unicorn. Okay. 
So you see, what, when I see that, I am personally shocked because it really understands the concept of a unicorn. It, it knows what are the key elements. It was able to draw this very abstract unicorn. And just to be clear, you know, so that you really understand visually, it's clear to you the gap between GPT-4 and ChatGPT, this is ChatGPT's unicorn, <laughs> okay? Over the month, so you know, we had access uh, in, in, in September, and they kept training it. And as they kept training it, I kept querying for my unicorn in TIGZ, okay? To see whether, you know, what was gonna happen. And this is, you know, what happened, okay? So it kept improving. Even more terrifying is AI's emergent ability, meaning AI models suddenly gaining an ability previously lacked, which can be quite scary. And here's an example from the Center of Humane Technology of an AI learning things that it previously could not do. What you see here, and I'll move into some other examples that might be a little easier to understand, is that you ask the, these AIs to do arithmetic, and they can't do them, they can't do them, and they can't do them, and at some point, boom, they just gain the ability to do arithmetic. No one can actually predict when that'll happen. Here's another example which is, you, you know, you train these models on all of the internet, so it, it's seen many different languages, but then you only train them to answer questions in English. So it's learned how to answer questions in English, but you increase the model size, you increase the model size, and at some point, boom, it starts being able to do question and answers in Persian. No one knows why. Oh, and yeah, these were not even done with the latest GPT-4 or Palm 2 models. These were the older versions. Imagine GPT-5 suddenly gaining the ability to do things that we are not aware of or fully understand. Current AI chatbots helped MIT students with all they needed to create pandemic pathogens in just one hour, as I covered in this video. So imagine what a more powerful GPT-5 could do. Let's talk about the timeline and conclusion um, for this video. I don't know. I think GPT-5's timeline is hard to predict, seeing as GPT-4 spent about six months in training and OpenAI CEO and President have both said that GPT-5 is not yet in training. So we can expect GPT-4.2 sometime in late 2024 if they started training by the end of 2023. But even with guessing the duration of the safety testing as 6 to 8 months, the availability of the newly announced NVIDIA H100 AI training hardware could delay things further. In all, I think the incremental release of OpenAI's GPT model is a good move for AI safety, caution, and guardrailing the scaling of large advanced AI. I would end this with Sam Altman's tweet on three things about a good AGI future where he highlights that the need for an effective global regulatory framework including democratic governance, sufficient coordination and collaboration between the most of the leading AGI efforts, and the technical ability to align superintelligence. Thank you so much for watching. Check out this video on how AI helped MIT students with the knowledge to create a pandemic in just one hour and have an amazing weekend.